Well, in the literature you will find uh, a wide array of, of terms which, to make it more uh, complex, uh, will even be used in different ways by different authors. But perhaps to get at least an overview about the most important ones, um, I would start with the resources. The comments refer to resources we collectively use resources we share. Elinor Ostrom calls it um, common pool resources. And when she talks about common pool resources, she mainly refers to so-called rival resources. That is, such things that get less when we share them. For instance, if I have a glass of water and drink a glass of your water, you cannot drink it anymore. But in a broader political and social commons debate, uh, we may refer to all kinds of resources we collectively use and share also knowledge and information and code. That is, the, the, important, the important thing here, the important point is that remember always that when you talk about the resources, you talk about the resources. The resource itself is not yet a commons. The commons is something more complex. So what is the next step or the next element? You have usually a community that commonly uses and shares and decides upon the use of those resources. And this is a, a process, a long process, um, which has to do with negotiation, by the way. A group of users needs to decide upon uh, who has access, who controls, who can make use of a given resources, for what purpose, and so on and so forth. And um, this process is called commoning. That is, interacting with each other, dealing with each other regarding the use of a collective resources in such a way that everybody can truly participate and will be treated in a fair way. So this process is called commoning. So again, we have the common pool resources or the collective resources and the process of commoning. In this process of commoning, we come, usually users come to an agreement about rules and norms, a way, concrete ways to share within their environment a given type of resource or several resources at the same time. And um, they commonly create institutions. They may have, these institutions may have different degrees of formality, so to say. But all of this, the resources, the community, the process of commoning and the institutions they create, all of this together, a complex social system. This is the commons. And there is another important term, I would say, and an, another important distinction to make. If you ask somebody on the street, what is a common? Usually people say, it's what we collectively own. And some people make uh, a comparison between collective ownership and commons, as if each kind of collective ownership would be a commons. That is not quite the case. Of course, the commons are things nobody can own individually. But the way they are collectively owned and the way they are collectively used can be very, very different. That is, we combine different types of property regimes within a commons. Actually, each commons is one of a kind. So in each situation, we have to find, the users have to find together the best way and the best the most appropriate property regime, which usually combines collective property with individual use, which is appropriate to their specific situation. And perhaps one last term, which is the term of enclosure. Actually, when I understood that the processes uh, of enclosure are as old as human society, and when I understood that they referred to whatever resource we need to reproduce our livelihood, being it water or land or forest or coat or knowledge. 
and that enclosure processes are driven by, by both, by the market and by the state. I finally understood that enclosure is beyond privatization. That is, whenever in a process being it driven by economic reasons, political reasons, or, or, or whatever um, other circumstance, people are separated from the resources they need to reproduce their livelihoods, or people who had a costume or use rights of a given resources are separated from these resources in order to confine it, in order to commodify it, in order to put it under state control, then we talk about enclosure. This is a process we can find in the 12th century and which is ongoing until today. It's back and forth and back and forth. The fight for the commons is the fight against enclosures. And remember, there is no commons without commoning. Now, it's very difficult to translate this into my language, German for instance. You may try to translate commons and commoning and enclosure in your language.